What a game. Game five here at Jacobs Field. Indians lead the series by two games. The Red Sox lead this game by one run. And Dustin Pedroia, leadoff man in the lineup for Terry Francona, will try and get something started for Boston. There is action for the Indians in their pen. And Pedroia into right center field trying to plug the gap. He's done that. Pedroia will have at least two. It's played well by Sizemore. And it's a leadoff double for Dustin Pedroia. So Pedroia is on base for the second time. And Euclid, who homered with one out, nobody on back in the first inning, takes the ball. Kevin won for three with that home run. His third home run of this postseason. Normally, a, a number two hole hitter would be asked to try to hit the ball the other way to advance the runner. I don't think so with Euclid right here. He's swinging the bat too well. Two and zero. Oh. It's Betancourt the right-hander and Masney the right-hander in the bullpen. Not Rafael Perez, the left-handed hitting Ortiz on deck. The left-hander on the mound. So Sabathia could have this hitter and one more Ortiz. Yeah, you don't need the left-hander up because you've got a left-hander out there right now with Ortiz on deck. But a very important man to get in Kevin Euclid. The 2 0. Two balls and a strike. And Euclid thinks he may have cracked his bat. 69 degrees at the start of the night. A warm evening, and again, the sweat pouring off the bill of the batting helmet of Kevin Euclid, which we've seen a couple of times in this series. Two balls and a strike. Runner at second, nobody out, and Euclid into right center field. That will at least advance the runner as Sizemore can't make the play. Knocks it away. Pedroia will score, and Euclid ends up at third. It's 3 to 1 Boston here in the seventh. One look cost Grady Sizemore from going full blast after that ball. CC Sabathia with frustration after exiting here with 112 pitches on the night, responsible for Euclid at third. And we talked about it that there was not the left hander, Rafael Perez, getting loose. You would think that Sabathia would stay in. To deal with a lefty Ortiz, but instead it's Betancourt, and Rafael Betancourt has made a name for himself this postseason, and in this ALCS in particular. The 32 year old former shortstop in the Red Sox organization has been virtually unhittable, only one hit so far in this ALCS. Joe, it's got to be the oddest infield alignment I've ever seen. All three guys on the right side of the infield, all in. As is Casey Blake at third. And a strike over the outside corner. Ortiz with a single, a walk, a run scored, and a strikeout. David Ortiz is a career 442 hitter during the postseason with a runner in scoring position. Down and away. The bigger the situation, the better he is. With the base is empty, 276 during his career in the postseason. Runners on, 385. Runners in scoring position, two out, 500. He's had eight game winning RBIs in 45 career postseason games. And his numbers are outstanding in games in which the Red Sox face elimination. The 1 1 pitch from Betancourt. In the air to left field, well hit. Back is Lofton at the track to make a basket catch for a long sack fly for David Ortiz. Euclid scores, and it's 4 1 Red Sox here in the top of the seventh. 
Pedroia has hit the ball hard tonight. He has hit into some tough luck all series. And he started this at the moment two run seventh inning with a leadoff double. The Red Sox can get Pedroia coming up with key hits and getting on in front of the two three four five hitters then watch out strike one to Manny Ramirez Fausto Carmona and Kurt Schilling would hook up in game six on Saturday at Fenway if the Red Sox win tonight. Good rip by Ramirez, but it's 0 2. Game two. Both Carmona and Schilling were gone by the end of the fifth. And for Schilling, five earned runs on nine hits. For Carmona, four plus innings. Three earned runs. That graphic was obviously wrong in that category for Carmona. 0 oh 2 the count, one out, nobody on, and time called. Ramirez has been on base three times tonight with a double, an RBI single, and a walk. Only one out in the inning, and Sabathia's night is finished. Four runs on ten hits. Six strikeouts, two walks. Still 0-2. It's a remarkable thing about Ramirez, how he stays alive on the strikes and refuses to swing at a ball just off the plate. The way he identifies not only different pitches, fastballs, sliders, curveballs, changeups, but how he identifies a strike from a ball just off the plate is remarkable. Four for seven with five walks after an 0-2 count this postseason. the outside corner is Betancourt gets the call two out to 80. Beckett has taken this into an area where if he turns in another inning or another inning plus the Indians do not get to go to work against the middle and setup relief of the Boston Red Sox. It could be Josh Beckett doing it all himself or handing the ball to Jonathan Papelbon. Keep in mind, we mentioned it earlier in the series. Jonathan Papelbon has never earned a six out save. Never. And he could be called upon that tonight. With the off day tomorrow, the off day yesterday, we are looking at a very fresh short reliever for the Red Sox. Papelbon has not pitched since Saturday when he went two innings in game two, of the 11 inning night. And early morning. Well, one one to Lowell. Hard hit, but foul. This week, Fox NFL Sunday returns with a double header. 49ers take on the Giants in New York. The Giants have won four straight, and then the Vikings go to Dallas to battle the Cowboys or other regional action. Begins this week with a built for tough Fox NFL Sunday pregame show. At noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, and high def. Right here on Fox. Lowell into center field and right at Grady Sizemore. It was a ball that Grady could not catch in right center field that played a large role in the. Two runs, seventh inning. Four to one, a little breathing room for Beckett here in the seventh. 